Good evening, you're watching the news from the Sultanate of Oman television. First, the headlines. Around 572,000 male and female students head tomorrow, Sunday, to schools in all the wilayas of the Sultanate, and the Ministry of Education appreciates the efforts to improve the educational march. The Sultanate wins two cups at the youth category in photographic World Cup competition in South Korea. The United States and Russia say they have resolved a number of issues standing in the ways of restoring a nationwide truce to Syria. Those were the headlines and now for the news in detail. More than 572,000 male and female students head tomorrow, Sunday, to their schools in all the lives of the Sultanate with the start of the new scholastic year 2016-2017. The Ministry of Education completed all technical and administrative preparations for the beginning of the new year in terms of the readiness of school buildings and provisions of all materials and needs as to create a convenient and comfortable environment and successful educational atmosphere for the students and the teaching staff. The number of teachers this year reached 56,607 male and female teachers. Her Excellency Dr. Madiha bin Ahmed Ashabaniya, Minister of Education, congratulated male and female students who will start tomorrow, the first day of their scholastic year. She also expressed her thanks and appreciation to teachers and all educational staff for the continuous giving and devotion and conveying the educational message. She said the educational march is moving forward as per plans. Draw in cooperation with all concerned bodies in the Sultanate. The Sultanate was crowned champion of World Photographic Cup in the youth category under 21 and World Cup under 16. This came within the activities of International Federation of Photographic Cup Conference, which is held in the Republic of Korea. This achievement reflects the photography arts section in the Sultanate is promising. The celebration included handing over prizes to the winners from various countries in the competition of Bengali Black and White Youth Ben Ali. Prior to the celebration, a photographic exhibition was open to visitors and participants. It included a corner for the winning countries to exhibit winning photographies. The conference, which is held in Korea, included cultural and artistic activities, which were attended by more than 350 participants from 69 countries. The United States and Russia say they have resolved a number of issues standing in the way of restoring a nationwide truce to Syria and opening up aid deliveries, but were unable once again to forge a comprehensive agreement on stepping up cooperation to end the brutal war that has killed hundreds of thousands. After meeting off and on for nearly 10 hours in Geneva yesterday, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov could point to only incremental progress in filling in details of a broad understanding to boost joint efforts that was reached last month in Moscow. Their failure to reach an overall deal highlighted the increasingly complex situation on the ground in Syria, including new Russian-backed Syrian government attacks on opposition forces. The intermingling of some of those opposition forces with an Al-Qaeda affiliate, not covered by the truce, and the surrender of a rebel-held suburb of Damascus, as well as deep division and mistrust dividing Was Washington and Moscow. The UN envoy Stefan de Mistura briefly sat with Kerry and Lavrov. Syrian rebels and civilians continued leaving Daraya today as part of a deal struck within the government. Under the terms of the agreement, around 700 gunmen will be allowed safe exit from Damascus suburb to the opposition-held north province of Idlib, while some 4,000 civilians will be taken temporarily to the shelter south of Daraya. Red Crescent vehicles were allowed in to evacuate the ill and wounded. 
Darius rebels struck the deal late on Thursday. After four years of grueling bombardment and a crippling siege by government forces that left the sprawling suburbs southwest of capital in ruins, the surrender of Daraya marks a success for the government, removing a persistent threat only a few miles from the seat of power. It provides a further boost for the Syrian army as it fights opposition forces for control over Aleppo, Syria's largest city. South Korea's foreign ministry today hailed the United Nations. Security Council statement denouncing North Korea's recent ballistic missile launches. The Security Council took a consensus action and selected a press statement strongly denouncing North Korea's test fire of a submarine launched ballistic missile as a violation of the UN resolutions. The statement also condemned other recent ballistic missile launches by Pyongyang. Meanwhile, North Korea has strongly condemned the Security Council's emergency meeting to discuss the North submarine launch ballistic missile test. North Korea's foreign ministry spokesman said the country would continue to take the kind of action that a fully-fledged military power can when the U.S. attempts to threaten it. Tunisia's parliament has approved Youssef al-Shahid as prime minister along with a new government focused on boosting the economy and fighting terrorism. Shahid's cabinet was confirmed last night in a 167-22 vote with five abstentions. The government has more women and younger politicians in its mix, but it retains previous ministers in key posts of defense, interior and foreign affairs. 41-year-old Shahed, a member of the president's Nida Tunis party, was appointed after last month's collapse of the previous government. Since its 2011 revolution, Tunisia has struggled with soaring unemployment and a slump in tourism, following last year's extremist attacks on a beach resort and museum that killed some 60 people. Taliban insurgents overran a district in eastern Afghanistan, killing and wounded dozens of police and soldiers, and threatening strategical important roads to Pakistan. The governor of Jani Kel district in the eastern province of Paktia said that after heavy fighting, security forces had pulled out of the district, which sits at intersection linking eight districts and which connects Paktia with neighboring coast, province and Pakistan. He added that more than 20 soldiers and police were killed and another 20 wounded in the fighting, while some 200 Taliban insurgents were killed. Mourners quietly applauded today as coffins were brought out of a community gym in Ascoli Piscano, where a state funeral was held for 40 earthquake victims. At least 290 people were killed in Wednesday's quake in central Italy. Prime Minister Matteo Renzi has declared a national day of mourning. A further two bodies were found overnight in the worst hit town. Meanwhile, Italian President Sergio Mattarella flew to Amatricia to see the damage firsthand before travelling on to the nearby city of Ascoli Pincetto for the funeral of the victims. Still to come in our news bulletin. With the participation of 400 competitors, activities of Salala Tourism Festival, competition for memorizing Holy Quran are concluded. هنا الرائحة العالقة بالذاكرة تأخذنا دهشة مختلفة لتبهرنا بجمالها الآسر. حيث ملتقى الأسرة امنح نفسك شغف التجربة فهنا حكاية الجمال لا تنتهي مهرجان صلاة السياحي 2016 من الخامس عشر من يوليو إلى الحادي والثلاثي من أغسطس عمان المحبة والوئام Welcome back to the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. 
the value of the Sultanate's imports of food commodities stood at 1.13 million Omani rials during 2015, compared to 1.16 million Omani rials during 2014, comprising a decline by 3.06% according to data released by the National Centre for Statistics and Information. The value of exports and re-exports of food commodities stood at 441 million Omani rials during 2015 against 426 million Omani rials during 2014, constituting a rise by 3.37%. With the participation of 400 male and female competitors, activities of Salala Tourism Festival competition for Nasheeds and Memorizing Holy Quran were concluded. The competition is its fourth edition, work included at Al Maruj Theatre. The competition aims to encourage students to memorize Holy Quran in addition to highlight students' talents in the field of nasheeds. The Holy Quran memorization competition was divided into six levels. The first level was memorizing the whole of the Holy Quran, the second level was memorizing 20 chapters, and the third level was for 10 chapters. The fourth level was memorizing five chapters, and the fifth was for two chapters. The sixth level was memorizing one chapter. Chapter. The event witnessed a wide participation of various society segments. Now for the general weather forecast around the Sultanate. Cloudy skies will prevail over the coastal areas of the Governor of Dofar and its nearby mountains, with intermittent drizzle. The rest of the Sultanate will have clear skies with cloud accumulation and scattered rainfall over the Hajar Mountains. Low clouds and late fog at night and early morning are expected over most of the coastal areas. Winds will be north to northeasterly light to moderate over the coast of the Sea of Oman, while in the coastal areas of the Arabian Sea it will be southwesterly moderate to active. Seas will be rough along the coast of the Arabian Sea with a maximum wave height of 3.5 meters and slight along the rest of the coast with a maximum wave height of 1.25 meters. On television before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. More than 570,000 male and female students head tomorrow, Sunday, to the schools in all wilayas of the Sultanate, and the Ministry of Education appreciates the efforts to improve the educational march. The Sultanate wins two cups at youth category and photographic World Cup competition in Korea. The United States and Russia say they have resolved a number of issues standing in the way of restoring a nationwide truce to Syria. With that, we come to the end of tonight's news bulletin. From all of us here at the newsrooms and the studio, it's good night.